Welcome. We'll be talking about pickup orders. A pickup order is used to define the terms for the delivery of goods from one location to another. Depending on your workflow, you can create a pickup order from scratch by adding it, or you can convert it from another transaction, for example, a quotation. You just click the Actions button and select Create Pickup Order. Your customers can also log into LiveTrack and click on Pickup Order to add a pickup order. They'll go through a series of steps, and at the end of the steps, they can print the label that they can put on their boxes. What we're going to do is we're going to create a pickup order manually. First, I want to show you the different templates that we have. The default is pickup order, but we have many different templates, such as one with no charges or one for NVOCCs. We're going to use the one with no charges, which is the most common. To create a pickup order, click the Add button and you get a dialog box. You can move around this dialog box any way that you like and you can expand it. In the General tab, there's a lot of information that comes out automatically. For example, the pickup order number comes from the configuration of the system, but you can change it here if you'd like. All the dates and times can be changed as well, and you have additional fields such as your employee, division if you choose to put one, your company name, and even a destination agent. This is useful if your agents log into LiveTrack to see their pickup orders. The next tab is the Shipper tab. In the Shipper tab, you can just select the shipper, for example, Shipper of Miami, and I want to specify a pickup location. If I have a pickup location that's different than my shipper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. Otherwise, I click the copy button. I have these change buttons here that I can click in order to change the address of each entity. The place field down here is useful if I want to classify the pickup orders by location or if I want to use zip codes for my rates. Let's move now to the consignee tab. In the consignee tab, I'm going to select my consignee. If I didn't have my consignee, I can actually add it down here. Just as I did in the Shipper tab, what I'm going to do with the delivery location is either select it or copy it. In this case, the delivery location is going to be my warehouse, so I'm going to select that. I can also choose to select the delivery place or just leave it blank if I'm not using zip codes with rates. The Client to Bill field here automatically defaults to the ultimate consignee, but if I choose to, I can change it. For example, I can make it my Shipper. Let's move on to the Supplier tab. In the Supplier tab, I can specify somebody other than the shipper or consignee, for example, if it's a vendor that supplies my inventory. So let's say this is my vendor. If I have an invoice number or a purchase order number that encompasses the entire pickup order, I can place them here. Otherwise, later I can itemize each item inside of the pickup order with its own invoice and purchase order number. In the Carriers tab, I have the option to put my inland carrier. The inland carrier allows me to specify who the trucker is going to be for the pickup. If I have my own trucks, I can add them or I can select one from the list. If I want to have FedEx, UPS, or USPS do the pickup for me, I can select one of these providers as a carrier and this will generate the charges using the Magaya Express Link plugin. For this example, I'm just going to select Trucking Company. And if they give me a pro number, I can put the pro number here, the driver's name, their license, and a tracking number if I get one from them. The main carrier section here allows me to put more information if the pickup order is going to be involved in a much larger logistics process. For example, if I'm going to have a export overseas, then I can actually specify the main carrier here. I can put a return address for the container. This is useful for NVOCCs, by the way. I can specify a booking number if I like and a preferred mode of transportation. The preferred mode of transportation field works with our online pickup orders. Next, we have the commodities tab. In the Commodities tab, I have several options, so let's go over them. The Add button allows me to add loose cargo or vehicles. Let's add some loose cargo. If I have part numbers, I can specify the part number and everything automatically populates. Then I just hit OK and I have my commodity. If I don't use part numbers, I can click on Add Commodity again and specify a description. For example, let's say I'm moving TVs. The Commodity dialog box has a lot of fields. For example, general information, identification, and so forth. You fill in what you need. Once you're done, you click OK, and you have another line item. Notice these are loose line items. That's what happens when I click the Add button. When I click the Add Container button, I can add a specific type of container, such as a pallet or a shipping container. For example, I'm going to add a pallet and put a description. Let's say I have laptops. I can specify any information that I like or leave anything blank. So far, I have to pick up one case, one box, and one pallet. If I want to itemize what's inside the pallet, all I need to do is select the pallet, click the Detail button, and I can add individual lines. For example, let's say that this pallet has this same part number in here, and I have 100 of them. So now, this pallet has 100 cases. This is very useful if you want to itemize what's inside of a pallet. 
If you don't need to itemize a pallet, you can just leave the pallet by itself, and that's perfectly fine. There's other buttons such as the repack and unpack that you can use if you want to repack your specific cases or boxes, or unpack them if you want to deconsolidate them. Notice at the bottom here I have all of my totals. Let's now go to our charges tab. In our charges tab we can have charges automatically show up, as you can see my inland freight income, which is green, and my inland freight cost, which is red, showed up automatically based on what I had set up in the system. If I want to add any additional charges, all I need to do is click on the add button and I get four options. The options with the word freight in it are used for freight rates. Everything else is going to be of type other, which is accessorial. In our case here, inland freight is a simple flat value. If I double click the charge, I notice I have the charge name, who the bill to party is, if it's prepaid collect, any currencies, and many other options such as whether I want to show this in the document or not. If I choose to do so, I can click on the generate button and it will create an invoice and a bill for me. I can also use the units button in order to specify different units for the charges. This screen here also applies to the units on the document. We have some other tabs that we can use. For example, if I want to add some events to this pickup order, I can. This is very useful if I want to email something automatically to a customer, letting them know that a pickup order has been created. I can also add attachments, such as photos and documents. We have a POD tab, which stands for Proof of Delivery. This works with our Final Mile app. The information in this tab is what's received from the Final Mile app. For example, if I create a task and send a pickup order to my driver, they'll go to the location to pick up the cargo, get a signature, and submit the information back to Mamagaya, filling all the information in here. The Notes tab is useful if I want to add additional information. I can also save any information and recall it later. For example, if I have a clause for my pickup order, I just click on it and click OK. I also have internal notes, which is only seen by my employees. And lastly, there's a custom tab. The custom tab is useful if you have additional fields that you can't find in the pickup order. Once I'm done, I click the close button and I have my pickup order. I'm going to expand it so you can see a bit more. I'll go here and click the zoom all. After you're done with the pickup order, you have many options. For example, you can email the document or the tracking link. You can also print the pickup order document or the label so the boxes are ready when the driver arrives to pick up the items. The Actions button has several options as well. For example, if you have Express Link, you can use the Express Link options in order to send to FedEx, UPS, or USPS. Once the items arrive to your warehouse, you can create a warehouse receipt directly from the pickup order. If you're not going to do anything else with the pickup order other than deliver it, you can use the In Transit and Delivered buttons. As we mentioned earlier, you can create a task for the Final Mile app. Here, you'll just assign any employee that you want and the task type, which is going to be Final Mile. You have dates and reminders. Now let's quickly take a look at the pickup order list. The pickup order list is very powerful and can be used for reports and KPIs. In this list, we have several options. Let's go through a three-step process in order to customize the view for your pickup order list. The first thing that you want to do is click on the Actions button and select Choose Columns. Here you can add any field from the pickup order. Second, you can select the predefined dates and you can filter the list using a standard or advanced filter. The advanced filter is very powerful because it has logical conditions you can use in order to filter out the criteria that you want. And then lastly, you can use the Save This View button in order to save the view and recall it later. For example, I'm going to call mine just Pickup Orders, and notice I can recall it now at any time. Thank you for watching this video, and please visit our knowledge base for step-by-step -step articles you can print or email to help you use the software fully.